Hey guys, Arias here and thank you for joining me for another video. Now after a disappointing race in the Nations Cup last time out, I decided to jump straight into this. And as you can probably tell by the title, it didn't go quite to plan. And it didn't go to plan straight from qualifying. I'm car number 6 but qualified in 18th. Wow. I'm in the Group 4 Lexus covered in the names of the very generous channel members shout out to you guys you know who you are but for now we're going to go nice and easy into the castrol corner for the first time it's easy to run wide on the exit with a heavy car and hard tires then we're going to go round the tired eating rabbits here keep your eye up in front as the lambo up ahead comes in with the save of the century now having made it successfully round the rabbits here there we're coming up the hill where it gets a little bit more interesting. We've got a late apex here and then there are multiple lines around this part of the circuit. Turn number five as we come down the hill is another place you can get dragged off for a trip to the desert. But keep your eye on the yellow Porsche up ahead as we come over the crest. He has to get out of the throttle there to avoid the sliding BMW. He's going to lose momentum and I'm going to come through to take the position. As we come through turn number four here, for me, we're approaching one of the riskiest corners in GT Sport, turn number nine. I'm going to look for the 150 meter board, break a little early as I was in traffic, and we're going to clip the dirt on the inside and slingshot down the straight. We're going to get a good run out of turn nine on the BMW. He knows the game is up, so he's indicating to me where he wants to go nice safe move into turn number one and we're up to 16th now shortly we up to 15th here as the Merc gets a right slide on at the top of the hill which is going to give me sight as we come around this corner here of the seven car train up ahead that i'm going to try my best to get stuck into two cars that you won't see well you will see when they go through the gate but you won't see for now actually have penalties they're going to come through the gate here, serve those, and I'm going to come through to take 13th. The ascendancy is going well for now. Jumping ahead here, we're going to talk about turn number 9 now. I think you know where I'm going with this one, but for me it is without doubt the hardest corner on GT Sport. The combination of the high speed on entry, the late apex, the not on the widest piece of tarmac factor and the worst bit of it all is the sand because if you get it wrong you just can't stop you just keep on going deep into the desert as I'm about to demonstrate the only comfort for me here is that I wasn't the only one to go off you can see the guy up at the head having similar issues now I managed to actually keep it off the wall but that was in vain as I then span and ended up in dead last. That's the second time I've said that in back-to-back -back races. But I'm going to try and forget that. We're going to try and have fun here, as I said last time out as well, and not worry too much about the driver rating, which is definitely no longer going to be A+. I'm also going to try not to worry about the lack of championship points I'm going to get, which is going to be maybe even under 100 at this point but do let me know in the comment section down below what you think the hardest corner is in GT Sport I've shared with you mine but I want to know if you think there are any other contenders now whilst we were recovering the Greek actually went into the pits he was on mediums and he's going to be staying on the mediums I need to get my head down here and try and recover this I'm planning a one stopper on hards at the moment because basically I don't know any better. Before I get onto the topic of the video, the yellow flags are out, keep your eye on the right, the Cayman there is off into the sand so we can be promoted up to 17th actually, as somebody else is off as well. But as you look behind, that Greek with the fresh mediums on is coming up behind so we may not be there for too long, but I will definitely try as I feel I'm better than my colleague and that mistake actually suggests. So while I try to keep him at bay, let's discuss the topic of this video. The topic of this video is practice 
and essentially how I need to do more. So I best talk about it. Those who watched my last iRacing stream will know that I am now home. What I mean by this is that I used to use YouTube money to rent an office space and that was generally because my internet was terrible. And when I say terrible, I'm talking one meg download and uploads wouldn't even register, which is absolute kryptonite for a inverted commas YouTuber such as myself. So it was a complete bind for me, both personally and financially. To ensure that I could keep creating content for you guys and ensure the channel didn't die, I kept paying for that office, which was loads of money quite frankly, and it was about a 15 minute drive away every time that I wanted to go online. Now that took time away from me in the evenings after work, after a long day at work, I wanted to come home and spend some quality time with the family and with essentially my wife who I hadn't seen all day. But because I couldn't just pop online, I just completely deprioritized practice as I'm sure pretty much everybody who's watching this video would. Which is why maybe the vid slowed down a little bit and generally got a bit moody I let things that shouldn't annoy me, annoy me because of all the other factors surrounding it. But now I have found a solution and I am home. Everything has changed and I am incredibly happy about it. I can now ensure that I get at least one practice race in to give myself a chance and minimise results like this. And it's all because I've got a decent internet connection now and rather than driving 15 minutes down the road and paying for parking and paying for an office, I can just literally run upstairs while she's watching EastEnders or watching Kardashians or some other rubbish and get on with some desperately needed practice. Jumping ahead to lap number seven now, this is going to be our in-lap on our one-stop strategy. We're approaching turn number nine again, both the Lambo and the Porsche are right behind me now. The Frenchman up ahead is going to go off like I did and then quit. Again confirming the need for just a one and done type arrangement for these FIAs. But keep your eye out on the Austrian in the radar in 20th. The Greek actually pulls out of the move like every good wise man should. But the Austrian left it all the way in. He bumps me off here. Luckily I wanted to pit anyway so in I come. I'm going to jump all the way to lap number 11 now. And the pack has shuffled slightly due to different strategies, but if you keep your eye on the left here, I'm going to come out just in front of that Austrian. Have a look at our tyres. The left hand side of the tyres are starting to go off quite badly now, and they're always subject to more wear around a track such as this. The clockwise tracks with long sweeping right handers really take it out of your tyres. As we said, the Austrian is behind us again. Let's see how long it takes him to be on top of us. So in answer to that one, not very long. We're approaching again at turn number five where he pulled off the move before. He's looking like he's sizing me up for one here by taking a wide entry to the corner before he's going to be up the inside. I'm going to see him coming and rather than being punted off and end up in the pits again, I'm going to let him through, but I get a good run here as we come down the start finish straight. He's positioned the car well, to be fair. He's on the inside now as we come into turn number one. There's nothing I can do. He's done well to keep it on the inside. He keeps it on the track as well, so a nice move from him after a poor one previously. And we're down to 16th. Rejoining the action here on the final lap, there's a group of four up ahead and you're going to see that the Cayman is going to go off. He does a good job there to bring it back on track without ending up up on those banks and taking a jump as we've all seen before, but he doesn't do such a good job as he goes off again. Let's just see. Yep, we just about make it past him without any issue, so we're up to 15th now, and the group of four of up ahead has now become three. Keep your eye on them here as there is going to be somebody else going off. I don't know what's happened. He was at the front of the pack, but we're about to pick up 14th. Now, not what we wanted, but I'll take everything we can get at the moment. And 14th is what it's going to have to be for now. I'm not going to show my DR and SR again, as I'm just concentrating on enjoying it for now. 
but I hope you did too and will join me for the next one. But for now guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.